I don't, depends on if they have, how many they have, just three, perfect. Coke Brenner. Baylor Shirebrand, Sherman. I'm sorry, what was the last one? All right, before we get started, a couple of reminders for you. Please, as a courtesy to your fellow media members, as well as the coaches and student athletes, please silence your cell phones. And then if you do have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get you the handheld microphone. Um, please identify yourself and your media affiliation each time you ask the question. And please uh, direct the question, uh, the name of the student athlete or coach when you direct the question. For those joining on Zoom, as a reminder, please use the raised hand function for questions and recording of the press conferences on cell phones or cameras is uh, prohibited. So for the Creighton Blue Jays, joining Coach Greg McDermott will be Ryan Kochbrenner, Baylor Shireman, and Trey Alexander. We'll go ahead and get started. Coach, opening remark on today's game. <coughs> 
was a, it's a really good win because uh, I, I, the more I watched NC State, the more they scared me. Um, you know, we're, our defense is built on kind of being able to protect the rim, and they don't go to the rim necessarily that much. And, uh, you know, Smith and Joyner are, are a handful to guard. And, you know, fortunately, you know, we made them take some tough shots. They made some tough shots. Um, but I thought, uh, you know, our, our offense, especially the last 10 minutes, uh, when they got in foul trouble to be able to get it into Kalk, I thought everybody did a great job of finding him in the right spots. And then uh, we had made a three forever, and, you know, Baylor stepped up and made a couple big ones. And, you know, uh, you know Trey fought his tail off all day trying to chase Smith around and make everything as difficult <coughs> as possible. So, yes, he had 32 shots, but at least it took 27, 32 points, but it took 27 shots to get there. Question down here in the front row. Uh, Mac, obviously, coming into the game, it felt like Burns hadn't seen anybody quite like Kalkman or, you know, a guy who can score without necessarily needing the ball. But does 31 points from, from Kalk surprise you at all? Uh, nothing surprises me from Kalk. Uh, you know, he's just continued to get better and better and better. And, you know, we were joking going into the locker room. I said, I can't believe he missed a free throw. Uh, you know, he shot 47, 48% as a freshman. Two years later, he's on the line, on the, on the, on the line with the game on the line late in the game, and he's knocking down free throws. So he's just he's improved in every facet of the game, and uh, he was able to, to score on on Burns. But then when they had to go small, you know, we did some good a good job of executing some some offense to get him <coughs> the ball around the rim, and then he did the rest. Take question here on the left side on the aisle, about four rows back. Okay. Uh, Baylor Eddie Pels from AP. Um, Two parts. It was a little frustrating, I think, or did you get a little bit frustrated today early? And also, we saw you blow a kiss to the crowd at the end there after you made a big shot. Was that to anybody in particular or just showing the love? Yeah, you know, obviously when shots aren't going, um, you know, that can be frustrating, but you got to find different ways to impact the game. Um, and, you know, ultimately my teammates and my coaches have confidence that, you know, the shots are um, going to fall eventually. And then that kiss, I, I don't know. I just, you know, Jason Tatum does it. I just think it's just that in the moment thing. It wasn't necessarily anything for anybody. So. Uh, next question will be on the right side towards the back. Ryan, Max Fritch with the Craytonian. Uh, when two of their bigger guys picked up four fouls, how did that change the game for you in particular? Uh, I'd say I still probably attack it the same way. Um, I mean, obviously, DJ Burns is much different than their other big guys, but I don't know, just have the same mindset, uh, trying to get deep catches, trying to just finish around the rim. I don't, I don't try to make it too complicated on myself by changing things up when different players come in, but I think just staying solid and just doing what I do. All right, we'll go to the left side on the. Uh about four rows back. Adam Kruger, CBS Omaha coach. When NC State went on its run to go up 37-30 briefly, you didn't call timeout. What does that say about the faith you have in your team? <laughs> well, they know I have faith in them. And, you know, R2 was kind of on the attack. And not saying I wasn't 100% going to call a timeout, but he, he, he got his shoulders by him, so I let him go. Um, and, you know, I trust these guys. We, we work on all that stuff in practice. And basketball is a game of runs. There's ebbs, there's flows. and. And I think good teams have to figure out a way to play through some of that. And, uh, you know, we obviously took one when we w went from up nine to up three there at about 30 seconds later in the half. But, um, yeah, I, I trust these guys. They know I trust them. Um, you know, they, we play basketball a certain way. And, and when we play that way, we're pretty good. Um, and, you know, they know, it, they know it will be successful if we stick to our plan. And uh, today, especially defensively, I thought, uh, you know, a lot of what Smith got was difficult, but everybody else we did a terrific job on and took a, you know, very explosive offensive team and, um, you know, ran them off the three-point line. We're going the right side on the aisle, four rows back. <coughs> uh, Mark Kissel with Denver Post. Uh, first to Baylor, and then I'd also like to get both your teammates. Uh, not to obsess about the kiss, but were you, how much were you feeding off the crowd there down the stretch? And I know this isn't Omaha, but talk about the atmosphere and, and how it helped you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's March Madness, you know, it's a, a great crowd and atmosphere and, you know, growing up, that's what you dream of playing in. And, um, you know, like I said, it was just like in the moment thing, you know, I like to have a lot of fun and interact with the people in there. I think, you know, that's what it, what it's all about. And so um, that, that's kind of the, the gist of it. Go ahead, Trey, add to that. 
Uh, I just feel like uh, for us to come from Omaha and be able to play somewhere in like Denver where it's not too far for, from home, and for everybody to just come out the way that they did, I mean, I think it just shows how special the community is in Omaha. Uh, I feel like we're very, uh, it gives a very type of home feeling, and I feel like everybody just supports us, whether, whether it's going good or bad. So for them to come out uh, to Denver and just see how much support we had from the Creighton community in Omaha and just kind of over in the area, it just means a lot. Ryan, did it feel like a home game to you? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, when we did starting lineups, every time they did one of our players, it felt like there was a roar from the crowd, and it was like, oh, this feels like home because the Creighton fans are amazing, and they travel well, and everywhere you go, it's like it feels like home because you've got a ton of support in the stands just supporting you. Front row. <coughs> All right, Trey, obviously, Tequavion is a talented player. You talked about him earlier in the week. Um, and in that second half, it felt like a lot of those rear view contests, he's kind of doing away with them. Just talk to me about what was going through your head when you got a piece of that, that shot at the end there. Uh, I just know that we were kind of, the second half, we kind of tried to throw a couple different ball screen coverages at him. And uh, I mean, the big boy, he set some, some big screens. I mean, it's hard to get over, <laughs> over his screen. But uh, one time he just, I kind of got over it and I was able just to kind of get on the side of him. And then I seen that Calk was kind of getting back to his man. So I was just able to like barely get my fingertips on it. And I mean, obviously it was a big play in the game and it kind of changed the momentum of the way that we were able to play going down another end, so. And, and Mac, obviously you don't want Turk to score 30 something, but at a certain point, are you kind of living with him, maybe getting the mid range and just locking up everybody else? Yeah, I mean, what do you do? Uh, you know, we, he was effective against our drop coverage now. You say effective, he's, he shot less than 50% from the floor. So um, he, he got us on the drop coverage, and then we, we tried to stretch him out, and we, we, he got a couple fouls. Uh, but he, he's really good. And, and uh, you know, Trey, I think, I think I thought Trey did a great job of really chasing him and making it difficult. He had one three-point shot. I don't think Trey was on him on a, on a staggered out of a timeout. Um, but, you know, he's, he makes a lot of threes. so. Um, you know, we, we tried to make him do things that he doesn't normally do, and to his credit, he was able to make us pay part of the time anyway. We'll go to the right side, third row on the end. Vinny Benedetto with the Denver Gazette. Baylor, you hit your first three like 10 seconds into the game, and then it seemed like there was a little bit of a cold stretch. What, what was going through your mind when shots weren't falling, and, and especially when NC State, I think, got up six or seven early in the second half there? Yeah, well, I kind of touched on it earlier. It's just you got to be able to impact the uh, game in different ways. And so, you know, shots not falling. Um, try to do my best to, you know, rebound or try to create for other people or just as simple as just encouraging my other teammates because, you know, I know they have belief in me. And so, you know, when things aren't going well for me, maybe they're going well for Kalk, like he had a great game. So just in continuing to encourage them. So <coughs> we'll go on the left side on the aisle, four rows back. Battle uh, for the fly, uh, Coach. How does the energy or the pace of this game set the foundation for the rest of the tournament? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we you know we saw a little bit of everything today. We had a lead. We lost a lead. We got the lead back. And, um, and, you know, then they closed in, and then we had to execute some things to finish. And you know, I'd, it'll make a pretty good St. Pat's Day for our Irish fans that have followed us over here from Omaha. So I think they're going to have a little fun tomorrow. Maybe a little slow for them, uh, but. We, we've got a, a lot of work to do to get ready for Baylor. Uh, but, you know, in, in this tournament, you, 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 you put your, the entirety of your focus into game one. And, you know, you just have to survive in advance. They talk about it all the time. And um, we beat a good team today, and we're going to play another good team on Sunday. So uh, we'll get off our feet, we'll get some rest, get a good meal, and uh, we'll dig into Baylor. <coughs> We're on the right side in the front row. Ryan, Sean Keeler of the Denver Post. What, what does this mean to you playing in the second round in the context of this last year and obviously what happened? And I know you've probably talked about it with local guys, but it's got to be pretty special getting ready for this weekend. I mean, yeah. Uh, I heard at the end of the game last year, and so it's just going to be a lot of fun to play in the second round. It's just it's 32 teams left, so it's a big opportunity and big honor to be in that game. and. Just, Happy to be able to play in it this time. <laughs> we'll go in the back on the aisle here on the left side. Coach uh, Pat Graham from the Associated Press. I got to ask you the backstory on your shoes. Uh, did your coaching staff convince you to do that, or how did that come about? Uh, my assistant ops guy, Matt, uh, John McHugh, ordered them five months ago, uh, and uh, thinking that we had a 50 50 chance we made the NCAA tournament to play on St. Pat's Day. So, uh, out of respect for him, and obviously <coughs> McDermott's a pretty Irish name, uh, we went with the green today. 
Right on the right side, second row. Matt, given given that you have all these guys who have experience in the NCAA tournament, did did you feel a looseness at all from them today? Just sort of let it all go, or what? <laughs> they were incredibly loose in the locker room before the game, almost uh, way way looser than I was. Uh, but they've kind of been that way all year. Uh, you know, they, they prepare and they're serious in their preparation, and they take they take that to heart. Um, but they have a way of getting themselves ready that's a little different than the way I got myself ready back in the day. Uh, but it's also part of their personality. And you know, my job as a coach is you never want to take that away. That's part of the joy of playing the game is having fun with your teammates. And uh, if, if I ever start to take that away, then I need to do something else. Front row here on the left. Uh, Mac, it, it felt like early on you kind of let Art create a little bit and, and rock out there and try to play making. And obviously <coughs> the, the shot making, didn't work so much down the stretch for him, but uh, he kind of came alive uh, doing some of that intangible stuff we talked about um, late game, and you kind of pulled him aside after that run and, and, and talked to him. Kind of what were, you, what were you saying to him there? Well, on that particular play, I wanted to know why his guy was open in the corner before he stepped out of bounds. Uh, but uh, Art impacted, you know, Baylor talked about impacting the game in, in other ways besides scoring. Uh, Art had his fingerprints all over this game. Nine rebounds, he had four assists, and they were all for easy baskets. Uh, I thought defensively he did a good job, uh, made a couple great plays. Um, and to your point, got into the paint, off the dribble, but under control, and then made, made really good plays out of it. So, uh, you know, he only took six shots, only made two of them, made all of his free throws, almost had a double a double. Like I said, that's a, that's a heck of a tournament game. Yeah. And Ryan, obviously, um, some good guards in this tournament. Uh, <laughs> Baylor has a few. And obviously, Toquavion is pretty talented between the wall ups and you know all the stops down the stretch. How confident does that make you about um, defending some of the better guards in this tournament? Um, I think just as a team, we do a good job of defending anyone we game plan against. I think Trey, Baylor, Nemhar, all those guys do a great job of doing their part in our defensive scheme to make it tough on the other guards. And you know, sometimes some guy will make you pay from time to time, but we made it. Tough for Traquavion Smith tonight, and you can live with that. But uh, I believe in our guys to guard any other guards this tournament has, and I know we'll be ready for them. We'll go on the right side on the aisle, five rows back. Hey, Coach, uh, Adesina Quig, a lot of sports talk. Congratulations uh, on the win. Uh, Baylor's three was uh, late in the game, was set up by Ryan's pass uh, late in the shot clock. Were you hoping to use Ryan as a decoy there and get it to Baylor <coughs> and play? And, and also uh, Ryan's um, improvement uh, as a passer as well. Yeah, you know, it's just that that's one of our out of bounds plays that we practice quite often, but we haven't used it all year. And uh, it felt like an appropriate time. And, and uh, you know, like I said in the locker room to the guys, a, a play like that takes five guys. Um, R2 set a good screen to free Ryan. Uh, Trey made a great pass to Ryan right where it needed to be. Uh, Art set a great screen uh, for Baylor up top, and then Baylor's got to finish it by making the shot. So. Uh, you know, as a coach, you save a couple of those in case you need them, and, and you hope when you need them that we execute it. And to, to our guys' credit, it was executed to perfection. Our last question will come on the right side in the back. Mac, do you have an update on Mason and his injury? Yeah, uh, I think the, the MRI or the x-ray, whatever they did, was negative in terms of anything worse than a sprain. But the, the, the grade of the sprain, I don't think we'll know <coughs> until he wakes up tomorrow and gets a little treatment tonight. Right. Thank you. That'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, gentlemen.
All right, we'll go ahead and continue with North Carolina State for the Wolfpack, joining Coach Kevin Keats, student athletes Terquavian Smith and Jarkel Joyner. Again, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll keep you the handheld microphone. Please identify yourself and your media affiliation and who the uh, question is directed to. Okay, Coach, we'll go ahead and have an opening remark on today's game. You know, I thought our guys fought the entire game. Um, we wanted to, obviously, they got a pretty good lead on us, and we wanted to um, cut the lead and put a little bit of game pressure on them, and I think we did. Uh, give Creighton a, a lot of credit, very good basketball team, and every time we made a run, I thought they made a run, and obviously they made some plays down the stretch. Um, I am uh, super proud of my team. I mean, this is, um, when you look at where we were at last year to where we're at now, and um, how hard our guys worked, and you know what, what a season we had with 23 wins and uh, guys playing their butts off and guys like Jock Hill Jordan and the other transfers and the guys like Dequavion Smith who decided to come back uh, means a lot to us in our program. Uh, I thought those guys you know, completely fought the entire year. <coughs> we did some really good stuff. Um, uh, we're going to walk out here with our head up, uh, continue to build and keep you know, pushing this program in the right direction. So questions? Questions for the student athletes or the coach here on the left hand side, third row. Corey Smith with Pack Pride. Kevin, for you, heading into this game, obviously, all the talk was on DJ Burns and that matchup with Ryan Kalkbrenner. How frustrating was that to, to not have that come to fruition with DJ getting so many fouls? Well, I, you know, that was more outside talk than anything. I certainly wish DJ could have been on the floor a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, guard play is really good, and our guard's been really good. These two guys have average 17 points a game between the two of them or more. Uh, on nights, DJ has been really good. Uh, certainly never really got into a flow. Um, and I thought their big was really, he was tremendous. He did a good job. We fronted him. Uh, we played behind. He did a good job. They found him. He made shots. Additional questions here on the right-hand side on the aisle. Fourth row back. Uh, Luke T. Cock, Raleigh is an observer. For Jarkel. How frustrating was it for you guys that you know you were kind of scrapping for shots at one end and trying to get find openings, and they would kind of get down to the other end and dump it in inside? And it, did that take a toll on you guys a little bit, sort of in terms of frustration? Um, I wouldn't say that it's frustrating because we knew the game plan, we knew what they was gonna do. Um, I feel like we could have been a little bit more disruptive because they're a great passing team. But um, give credit to them, they found their big man. Here in the front row, or in the sorry, second row here in the aisle. Rob McLam with Inside Pack Sports. My question is also for Jark Hill. Uh, so much at NC State's about legacy and heritage. How important is it to you that you've lifted NC State back up to that level where they're in the mix for the NCAA and competing for these type of awards? Um, man, it's been great. Um, when I first came on my visit, Coach um, told me we was going to go to the NCAA tournament. And everything he said to me in that office came, came <clears throat> true. Man, and I love him to death, man. I'm so glad I came here. Uh, man, so family oriented, and I'm so glad that we got back to the NCAA tournament. You know, coach been a winner all his life, you know, and man, I'm so glad he he be able to coach me and get me to that, get me to here, and it's been, it's been fun. Okay, we'll go with the right, stay on the right side here, third row back. Trayvon Miles, ABC 11 in Raleigh. T, you decided to come back. Um, you know how things ended right now tonight. Uh, but given everything you've been through over the last two years, um, what, have, what has it been like? What, is, what has your career been like? And what do you take away from uh, the things you've learned here? Uh, I'm just blessed and glad that I got to play with the group of guys I got to play with. And I'm glad we got, I got the culture that I have and I got the staff that I have. And I, I'm glad that I chose NC State. Uh, <clears throat> like he said, like Jarkel said, every time I talked to Coach and when he was recruiting me all the way till now, everything he told me that would happen, happened. Uh, I just had to believe in it and put the work in for it. So I'm just glad to have these group of guys and the coaching staff that I have. Stay in the left, over here in the left on the third row back. Corey Smith, Pack Pride. For Turquaviana and Jarkel, obviously this is the only year the two of you will get to play together. What has that experience been like being sharing the same backcourt throughout this year? Man, it's been fun, man. Um, me and T are like brothers. Uh, man, and I love him to death, man. He's, he's an amazing person. I feel like he's more as an amazing person than he is a basketball player, and he's an amazing basketball player. And he's going to do great things in his career, whatever he decides to do, and I love him to death. Uh, yeah, I can say uh, we brothers. Uh, this is my big brother. I 
take everything he said in consideration. Uh, whenever he's trying to tell me anything, as far as on the court, off the court, uh, I, uh, somebody I know I can count on, uh, and I just love him. You know, I wish we had more time together, uh, just so we make it better, make the chemistry better. But yeah, I'm glad uh, he came, and I'm glad it was the best fit for him. And I just love him. You know, he's my guy. We'll go across the aisle, the third row on the right side. Yeah, Chip Alexander, Newsom's over. This is for Kevin. Just uh, you went into the game knowing you had to defend a three that they could. They had, had great success this season. They were three for 20 on threes, and a couple of those came late. Just, what, do you, what did you feel like the difference in the game was? Was it just a, a shot here and a rebound there and a call, a no call? Just what was the difference in the game? Yeah, I, I thought we did a great job defending the three. When you look at them, they were three for 20. Uh, we obviously didn't shoot the ball well. I thought they got some point interior baskets that uh, certainly helped those guys getting a little easier baskets. It was a possession game. If you look at it, the ball bounces one way or we make a couple shots here, it may be a different outcome. But give them credit. I thought they made those threes out of those uh, three threes they made. I thought they made two down the stretch that were really huge. They kind of put them over the top. Great. Second row. Robert Lamb inside pack sports. Kevin took away there and got the two fouls put him to the bench. I think generally this season you would leave him on the bench the whole half. You made the decision to bring him back. How well do you think he massaged that situation and what led you to make that uh, choice? Well, he's a lawyer. <laughs> and, um, you know, he, he from the time he got the second foul, he's like, oh, I got it. And so it was the end of the year. And, and, I, and listen, um, these two guys have been tremendous. If I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down and I wasn't going to have him sitting on the bench with two fouls. And, you know, I, I made the decision if he fouled out, he fouled out. Uh, luckily, he didn't. But you know what a, you know I, I haven't said this enough. What a special backcourt this has been. I mean, you look at two guys that are right over 17 points a game. Um, they trust each other. They fight each other. They compete against each other. They love each other. They hang out with each other. You know, it's been a really special group. And I don't, as a coach, you don't get that all the time. You don't get two guys who are really winners who compete the way they do. And I'm, I'm really grateful that both of those guys have decided to come to NC State and play for NC State because we wouldn't be in the position without those guys. Um, but I wasn't going to sit them down. Uh, we, you know, we, we're going to go out. And if we were going to go out or we're going to win the game, it's because of our guard play. Stay on the right side, four rows back. Kevin, when, when Terquavion dunked on Kalkbrenner, did you have any sense at that point that maybe the tide had turned your way? Um, and that you just kind of had to see it out. I mean, was there that, did you have that feeling sort of in your gut at that point? Yeah, I thought, you know, I thought we made a couple big plays. I thought the dunk was a big play, the next possession, Jack hit a big three. Um, and then we came down and they, you know, we couldn't get stops. We went up, we couldn't get stops. The ball bounced a couple different ways, but it definitely shifted our momentum, uh, the momentum towards our way. I thought we did, I thought we did some good stuff. I just thought they came down and made a few more plays than we did. I'll check our Zoom connection. Any media who are online here, if you have a question, please use the raised hand function. All right, hearing none online. Any other questions from the room? I have another question here, follow up in second row here. Just Kevin, I just the last thing. These guys have helped lift this thing back up to the NCAA. The meaning that has to you, the gratitude you have for your team this past season. Yeah, I just listen, it's a lot of what you guys don't understand is a lot of hard work to go into winning. Uh, winning is not easy. Um, at some point in my career, I thought winning was very easy because I was comfortable and we won. Uh, when we had the year last year, I realized that it's not given to you to earn. You got to earn. You got to work. Okay. Uh, I had Boo push me to look at everything. Uh, I had Chancellor Woodson, Woodson support and both of those guys support. And I wanted to make sure that I went out and I, I made some positive changes. Uh, the most positive change was probably in myself. You know, look at myself in a different way that I've never looked at myself. Um, but I also wanted to get out and find some guys that I felt like they were NC State guys. They played hard, they competed. You know, we talk about uh, accountability. We have art. We call art um, accountability, relentless, toughness, and together. I wanted guys to be able to do this. I have an elite sophomore who was an elite freshman who decided to come back to school. He didn't have to. Uh, I wanted you know, to bring an older guy beside him to be able to help him get where he needed to be. Um, I am proud. You know, we did some really great things this year. Uh, maybe one of the best turnarounds in college basketball. 
Uh, and it's because of the people around me and the staff that I put together and everybody's hard work and everybody's commitment to get, get us to where we needed to be. Okay, and we just, we don't want to go back to that one year. I, I want to look at it as it was a bad year and I want to con continue to, for the program to rise. And, you know, the biggest thing is, like, to be quite, as on quite honest with you, I got humble. And when you get humble, you look at things a, a completely different way. And I'm glad I got humble because you learn a lot through going through some adversity. And that was something that I'd never done in my life. But I went through adversity and it made me look at things in a different light. And I'm glad I did because we're, we're where we're at today because of what we went through. <clears throat> All right, that'll do it. Gentlemen, thank you. Thanks. Okay, again, Hammond Communications will post a recording of the press conference in the NCA Digital Media Hub at www.nca.veritone.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Make the announcement on like on the cell phones, and I'll say, and those in the back of the room, please keep your conversations to a minimum. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely.